BPC-157, short for Body Protection Compound 157. BPC-157 is one of the most popular and controversial peptides out there, the one people call a recovery miracle and regulators call a headache. It's a lab-made fragment of a protective protein found in your stomach. Inside your body, that protein helps repair tissue and calm inflammation. So, the logic is simple. Make more of it, heal faster. That's the claim anyway. You'll see BPC-157 talked about as the cure for inflammation and injuries throughout the body. Tendons, muscles, joints, even the gut lining. In animal studies, wounds closed quicker, joints recovered sooner, and stomach ulcers actually healed. In humans, the evidence is still thin. Most of what you hear comes from people experimenting on themselves and comparing notes online. The most common way to use it is through small, under-the-skin injections, usually near the injury or into belly fat. Some try oral capsules or nasal sprays, but your stomach acid tends to destroy most synthetic peptides before they can do much. Injections are the version people swear by because at least they know it's getting into the system. Like most other peptides, it's not FDA approved, so purity is unpredictable. Some products are made in legit compounding pharmacies. Others, you probably don't want anywhere near a needle you're going to use. And even when it's clean, no one really knows what the long-term effects look like. There just haven't been enough human studies to say. That's part of what makes peptide use so controversial. The science looks promising, but the oversight is practically non-existent. Still, the stories keep spreading. Weekend warriors say it cuts their recovery time in half, and people with long-term joint pain claim it miraculously goes away. Whether that's biology or belief, BPC-157 is taking peptides out of the lab and into every gym conversation about healing faster and aging slower. TB-500 if BPC-157 is the repair signal, TB-500 is the crew that shows up to do the work. It's a synthetic version of a peptide called thymosin beta-4, something your body produces in small amounts whenever tissue gets injured. Its main job is cell migration, basically telling healing cells where to go and helping new blood vessels grow so damaged areas can rebuild more quickly. TB500 can be used on its own for muscle strains, tendon injuries, or post-surgery recovery, though it's commonly paired with BPC-157. BPC-157 helps kickstart the repair process and reduce inflammation, while TB500 improves circulation and speeds up the rebuilding phase. One tells the body to start fixing, the other makes sure the right materials actually arrive. Early studies, mostly in animals, suggest TB500 promotes faster healing, less inflammation, and even hair growth in some cases. Human research is still limited, but enough athletes and rehab specialists have reported quicker recovery that it's earned a steady following. The risk is the same as with most unregulated peptides. No oversight, inconsistent quality, and a big question mark around long-term safety. But that really hasn't stopped anyone. Many swear that stacking TB500 with BPC-157 is the ultimate recovery combo, the pair that has made people start taking peptide therapy seriously. CJC1295 plus Ipamorlin. This is the stack everyone talks about when your goal is to build lean muscle and burn fat at the same time. CJC1295 isn't an abbreviation for anything complicated. It's just named after the company that developed it, Conjuchem Biotechnologies. It's a peptide that signals your pituitary gland to release more growth hormone, the same hormone responsible for muscle repair, fat metabolism, and recovery during deep sleep. When levels rise, your body gets better at building lean mass and using fat for energy instead of storing it. Ipamorlin supports that process by triggering small, timed bursts of growth hormone release throughout the day. When stacked with CJC1295, the two help raise GH and IGF-1 levels, two key drivers of muscle protein synthesis and fat metabolism. When taken consistently, users often notice improved muscle tone, less stubborn fat, and quicker recovery after workouts. Others report better energy and deeper sleep, side benefits that come with better growth hormone balance. Because these peptides directly affect hormone-related pathways, they're not recommended for anyone with a history of cancer, active tumors, or uncontrolled hormone conditions. 
For everyone else looking to change body composition, they're used as part of a long-term plan, something you commit to for steady change, not overnight results. It might take patience, but CJC1295 and Dipamorlin are one of the most talked about peptide pairs for a reason. When they work, you can see the results in the mirror. Tessamorlin. Tessamorlin is the one that goes straight for stubborn belly fat, the deep hidden kind wrapped around your organs that barely moves no matter how clean you eat. It works through the same growth hormone pathway as CJC1295 and Ipamorlin, but has a single focus, reducing visceral fat, the dangerous type that even liposuction can't touch. It was originally developed for people with HIV-related fat accumulation and actually FDA-approved specifically for that purpose. But once bodybuilders and fitness circles noticed its effect on abdominal fat, its off-label use spread quickly among everyday people looking for the same results. Unlike the CJC stack, which keeps growth hormone elevated in steady waves, Tessamorlin delivers a quick pulse, sharp enough to trigger IGF-1 release and push fat metabolism into overdrive, especially around the core. Used consistently with real training and nutrition, users often see a trimmer, more defined waistline and find it easier to manage their weight. It's powerful, but not for everyone. Because it influences insulin and blood sugar, it's off-limits for people with diabetes, pre-diabetes, or anyone on glucose-lowering medications. It should also be avoided during pregnancy or in anyone with active cancer due to its growth hormone effects. That caution aside, Tessamorlin's appeal is simple. It gets rid of that soft bulge around the middle that we all really hate. GLP-1 Peptides GLP-1 peptides are the poster child for the modern peptide boom the drugs behind names like Ozempic, Wagovi, and Manjaro. They started out as prescription treatments for type 2 diabetes, using ingredients like semaglutide and terzepatide. These drugs mimic a hormone called GLP-1, short for glucagon-like peptide 1, that helps manage insulin, slows down how quickly your stomach empties, and tells your brain you're full sooner. Together, these effects reduce appetite and make overeating feel almost impossible. The mix of genuine science and visible results turned them into the biggest medical-to-mainstream crossover since Botox. People lost serious weight in clinical trials, up to 15 to 20% of their body weight, and the word spread fast. Within a year, shortages, celebrity use, and price wars made semaglutide the new status symbol of modern medicine. But the success came with problems. These drugs must be used continuously to keep the weight off, once you stop, your appetite and insulin response rebound hard. Common side effects include nausea, constipation, fatigue, and muscle loss from losing weight too quickly. Long-term use can also dull appetite so much that nutrition and muscle maintenance become a challenge. Unlike most peptides, GLP-1s are fully FDA-approved pharmaceuticals, but they're now being handed out far beyond diabetic care in med spas, clinics, even through telehealth apps that barely screen patients. They're the drugs that brought peptides into pop culture, the success story that opened the door for every so-called fat-burning peptide that came after, including the ones that never earned approval but rode the same wave. AOD 9604 After the GLP-1 explosion, AOD 9604 showed up promising the same fat-burning magic without the injections, the hormones, or the drama. Technically, it's a synthetic version of a fragment of the human growth hormone, designed to trigger fat metabolism without the hormonal side effects that come with actual GH therapy. It sounded perfect. No growth hormone spikes, no muscle bulk, just a cleaner, safer way to lose weight. But here's where it hit a wall. Research on humans hasn't lived up to the hype. Animal studies looked hopeful, but clinical trials have shown mixed or minimal results. It's sometimes sold overseas as a cosmetic or wellness ingredient, but it's never been FDA approved for weight loss. So while it's marketed like the next big breakthrough, most experts see it as a safe sounding peptide with no actual evidence that it works. Despite limited proof, it still has its loyal users, those who are wary of hormone based peptides or just looking for a cheaper, more accessible alternative. GHKCU. This one is often referred to as the beauty peptide, and it actually lives up to the name. GHKCU is a naturally occurring copper peptide that shows up when your body is healing. It helps repair tissue, build collagen, and improve blood flow, 
which is why it's become the fan favorite for skin, hair, and anything labeled anti-aging. You don't need to inject this one. It's built into face serums, healing creams, and scalp treatments. On skin, it smooths fine lines and wrinkles, fades redness, and helps tissue recover faster after microneedling or lasers. On the scalp, it's used to strengthen follicles and improve circulation, which may help slow thinning and support hair retention. And this one isn't just hype. Studies show measurable improvements in collagen, skin thickness, and elasticity with regular use. Research on hair is less extensive, but early results suggest it may help reduce shedding and support new growth over time. It's easy to get in both over-the-counter and prescription forms, and gentler than most active skincare ingredients. Unlike retinol, it rarely causes irritation, dryness, or flaking, which makes it easier to stick with long-term. If there's one catch, it's patience. GHKCU takes time to work. But, if you're willing to keep at it, it could be a relatively painless way to shed a few years. Melanotan 2 Melanotan 2 is the peptide you'll hear talked about in back alleys and private forums, the one that promises a tan, a libido boost, and a list of side effects you'll never forget. It's a synthetic version of a hormone your body already makes called alpha-MSH, which tells skin cells to produce melanin, the pigment that darkens skin. But it doesn't stop there. The same receptors that increase pigment also influence sexual arousal, which is how a tanning compound ended up known for unexpected erections and sudden spikes in desire. It's been sold under names like Barbie drug and melanotan shots, often through online sellers with no medical training. A few injections can deepen skin tone in days, no sun required, but it can also cause nausea, flushing, darken freckles, and in some cases, uneven blotches that don't ever fade. None of it is FDA approved, and there's no telling what's actually in the vial. Clinically, it started as a research attempt to reduce skin cancer risk by mimicking a natural tan. What spread instead was a black market version used for aesthetics and enhancement. People like the results, but not the unpredictability. Not only can it overstimulate pigment cells, mess with blood pressure and heart rate, and possibly even raise the risk of melanoma. But because it interacts with sex hormone receptors, it can also cause side effects that show up at the worst possible times and make small talk a little complicated. Even with the risks, it's gained quite a following. People who want darker skin without the sun and an unexpected perk they don't always mind. It just goes to show that when vanity and curiosity meet chemistry, Caution rarely wins. DSIP Discovered in the 1970s, DSIP, short for Delta Sleep-Inducing Peptide, was first studied for its link to deep, restorative sleep. It's a synthetic version of a small protein your brain naturally produces under stress and exhaustion, thought to help regulate your sleep-wake cycle and calm the nervous system. Researchers hoped it could fix disrupted sleep patterns and reduce cortisol spikes, the kind that keep your mind wired long after your body's ready to rest. But results were inconsistent. Some studies showed it helped people fall asleep faster and recover better after fatigue or jet lag. Others showed almost no difference at all. In practice, DSIP is something people turn to when they're desperate for sleep. You'll find it in the hands of biohackers and athletes, often used as a small injection or a nasal spray they add to their nighttime routine. They say it's not a knockout drug, just a way to help a racing mind finally shut down. Peptides are the latest breakthrough blurring the line between science and self-experiment. They sound like the next step in evolution, until you realize no one's sure where that step leads. Maybe they'll keep us young, or maybe they'll prove why we shouldn't have tried.